Oh, oh, oh right. <laughs> At least that's what you said to me. Hey Ellie, welcome. First person. That's kind of special. Um, same story as yesterday, guys, except today, uh, it's still raining a little bit, so I've given up on the view, we've pulled ourselves back, and now we're underneath a little bit of shelter, so that way it won't be as stupidly wet as it was last time. Right. And now, with a bit of luck, the paint, yeah, will stay. <laughs> yeah, we're still doing this one. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty excited to see what it comes out like as well. We had a bit of a battle yesterday, if you were here for it. <laughs> it was a bit of a shocker. But today, it's all looking good. And the reason it's looking good is, um, first off, when we started painting, I didn't immediately knock over my coffee, which is always a great start. And second off, everything's dry. It's wet out there, but it's dry here. So, I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay.
<laughs> um, you sort of can and you sort of can't. If it's um, oil paints, you can get away with a bit of rain. But if it's uh, acrylics or, God forbid, watercolour, you're done. There's no way. So I was on oil paints. So I had a little bit of hope, Lucy. A little bit of hope. But, um, yeah. I'm not saying I recommend it. But, honestly, if you're in the right mood, some light rain coming down while you're painting outside can be kind of cool. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Have you got a BFA? I do. Oh, well, I've got half of one, and then I've got the second half of it finished because I moved universities. So I went down to... I started in Wellington doing a Bachelor of Fine Arts there, and then I swapped because my brother was down in Dunedin, and so I moved on to doing Art Theory and Art History at Otago University in the South Island, and took up some papers at the Polytech at the same time. So I could still be with my family, I could live the Otago life, and still pursue visual art, but then get the theory behind it too. Which, honestly, I preferred that. I thought that was real good. Um, so, mixture. Um, cheers, Benny. Appreciate that. And I think, what's today's objective? Um, well, since we're in a dry patch, what's brilliant about this is we're just gonna, blah, sorry, slurring my words. We're just gonna slap down, where I'm just gonna slap down a bunch of bolder shapes and colors. So today's kind of a fun day because from your perspective and from mine, we'll start to see the actual painting showing up more. It won't be perfect, but you'll start to actually see those larger characteristics of the picture sort of coming out the bolder shapes we might by the end of it start to see the horse and start to see the woman and start to see the actual um movement and emotion behind the picture but um we still won't be able to make out that fine detail we don't want detail yet all we want is a large expressive bold colors um i'll show you the palette too you check that out we're working just in the darks right now and chucking those up but towards the end, we're going to get into the yellows, we're going to get into the pinks, and we're going to really spice it up with some saturated colours. Um, yeah. So, honestly, in my personal opinion, layer two is the most fun layer because the first layer was an absolute mess. It always is. You're just putting down paint so you've got something to work on top of. There's that white coat, which is gesso. There's the messy coat, which is texture, and then now we're on to adding the bigger shapes. Still, as per usual, no plan, guys. We're just, um, we're not putting on any guidelines. I hate guidelines. It like, it takes the whole fun out of a picture before you even start it. Just start. And if something's in the wrong place, you can just move it later on. I didn't, Lily, I didn't kick the coffee over today. That's how I know it's a good start to the day. I'm so proud of myself. It's the little things. Um, I lived in Jeepers. That's a good question. I lived a couple of blocks away from Cuba Street. I remember going to um, Fidel's for coffee. It was too pricey for me when I was a student, but that's where I went if I could afford one. One's gonna ha what's going to happen to this painting while it's done? Well, it depends. I'm not quite sure. Um, if it's done really nicely, and I'm really proud of it, I only let things that I'm proud of leave the studio. But um, if it comes out really well, um, and we have a lot of fun doing it, then I'd like to give it to the lady in the picture. Because that's sort of cool. Um, but, we'll see. She might see it and be like, hmm, don't like it. <laughs> in which case, I'll keep it, and I'll be happy for it. So I can't wait. Um. <laughs> oh, thanks, Haley. I'll keep trying. Um, yeah, this one's already got paint on it, so 
That's not too much of a big deal. Not too much of a big deal. Um, Haley brings up an important point though, guys, because, no, I'm not from Welly, I'm from uh, Te Aumutu, so from, 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 that's sort of around the Hamilton, South Hamilton area, and then Bay of Plenty most of my life. Um, so, Haley brings up a good point, guys. If you are painting, your painting shouldn't look good for the first five out of 10 layers. If you do 10 layers, the first five, it should look terrible. And then for, like, some painters go from patch to patch by numbers and slowly go around it. And so every point you see it's perfect and they get to areas and make it perfect as they go. That's one way to do it. It's not everyone's way. Your way can be to build the whole thing up at once. But if you do that, understand that anyone who sees it isn't gonna like it. And um, when I was originally streaming on Reddit, um, I found that I started to do this really bad thing. And I apologize to everyone for it. I started to hide or like not show the first five layers of painting. I just turn it into a time lapse or something and hide it from everyone. And that was bad because then I'm there live streaming, showing a piece of artwork in its finished form while I finish it off, pretending like that's the way art should be. That's outrageous. So what I, um, yeah. So I've started showing the whole thing basically guys. And yeah, it will look bad for the first five or so layers. We just deal with it. It's all good. Um, but bear in mind, if you're going to do it in a public place, we're in a lovely place right now, but if you're going to do it, I think your art's great. Hey, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> should see mine. Um, the, if you're going to do it in a public place, like at a beach, which takes a lot of confidence, or like on a sidewalk, people can see you, realize that 50% of the time you're painting it, people are going to look at it and say, that person needs to quit. They're no good at what they're doing. So, have confidence in yourself. Trust that in the later stages of a painting, it's going to come together. Um, and, yeah. That's my advice there from a random Kiwi person streaming live on TikTok. You're welcome to ignore that feedback. Art is literally trust the process. Lucy, that is 100% correct. That is 100% correct. Um, but make sure you know what your process is. Everyone's got a different one. Um, for me, I'm filling up a paint tray with a ridiculous amount of paint and I'm just looking out for shapes and hues and I'm just adding paint where I think it goes. And I'll personally hate the artwork like in where it's at at any given stage, but if I at any stage start thinking to myself, oh, I just want to put some paint over there because it'll make the arm look right or the face look right, it's ruined, it looks terrible. But as long as I keep trusting that if I just keep putting paint where I think it belongs, and after a long, long, slow slog, the picture just starts coming out of it. It can't help not to. But you'll, you'll definitely strangle it if you try and see anything other than the shapes that are actually physically there. Another thing I'll do with my style too, guys, is I will um, not acknowledge a difference between the foreground and the background when I'm adding the paint. Um, that's helpful because otherwise you get this weird sort of barrier or fault line between your subject and the background you had to put up with. And it looks funny on paintings, I find. So put as much, if you've added background to the work, put as much attention on the background as you do on the foreground. The struggle of an artist's mind, yeah. Yeah, I'll share everything with you guys. If you want to know more about battling with that sort of stuff, you can have the whole lot. Um, I get op shop shirts. So go to an op shop, buy some white shirts, or yeah, wherever you can get them from, and then you can get paint on them. 
this was actually a nice shirt before I got paint on it, so this isn't that style, but... Mm. Or, another funky idea is to wear your nicest shirt, your very nicest shirt. And the reason you do that, since psychologically you control more about where you put the paint, that's one thing you can do. Can you paint me a Birmingham? I'm not sure what a Birmingham is, but I might be able to paint it. You never know. Op shops. A what shop? Oh, sorry. An op shop is a second hand shop. So if you've got a limited range of clothing um, and you get paint on yourself all the time, then a good option is to get clothes from an op shop. Because then if you get paint on them, you only paid a few dollars for it. Lol, pronounce Birmingham. Sorry, I was close. I was close. I wasn't close at all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Da, 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 da. Kia ora and good morning. Is that Evelyn? Evelyn. You should do one on one art sessions over Zoom or something. Um, I have done a few. A couple of people have reached out and we've done some fun things like that. Um, usually, if you want art lessons to improve technique, it's best to have the artist in the room with you so you can actually, he or, si he or she can show you the flow of the brush, can complement your technique right there on the spot. But, um, if you're over a Zoom, that's great to actually work on things like creative process, getting your mind in the right place. Sort of theory training works really well over a chat. But do you even need that if you get so much of it right here? Um, the painting is something. <laughs> it is something. Um, oh. Ah, it's a type of horse. Sorry, Andy. Um, I thought it was a place. I thought it was in the UK or something. Um, I could absolutely paint a horse. Um, I'll tell you what. Let me get this one finished. And if you like it, we can talk about the horse. Right, you got to make sure that you like this horse first. Otherwise, we're all just wasting our time. Cheers, guys. Appreciate you. <laughs> Stick man to painting like this. Um, it's a hard one. It's only a hard one because likely you've been told by everyone 
or you've told yourself a lot that you don't know how to paint or you can't paint. And because of that, there'll be a, there'll be a, a mental block there. Um, sort of like if you've never played tennis. Tennis is an easy game to play, but you'll be thinking, I can't play tennis because I've never played tennis. Um, that would be, it wouldn't be too hard to teach someone how to play tennis, you know, reasonably well. So, I think um, the first thing would be accepting that, sorry, let's try to get this paint in here. First thing would be to accept that you could be a good painter, and once you believe that, then um, I would probably, sorry. Um, could be a good painter. And then, hmm, it's hard. Having friends around is really cool to do painting with. Um, that builds up your confidence a lot because if you're all doing it together, you'll feel this crazy sitting there by yourself throwing paint around. Um, wine and paint, now that's a good idea. Get some friends over, grab some paint, and drink some wine. And then all just make crazy, weird, abstract, disastrous things. And we'll have fun and learn a lot from that. Cheers, Zoe. Appreciate you. Paint each other. That's actually quite cool. That's a cool idea. Hey, abstract painting is the f is, well. A lot of abstract painters having a lot of fun. So, if you're painting abstract, I don't reckon there's anything wrong with that. There's a classic one here, guys, because this horse head, we've sort of built the, we've put the lady in the right place, we've put the body of the horse over here, but actually this whole body's knees get brought bigger and across because the head wants to naturally finish here, which is almost a half foot off the face. And this is what happens when you don't have guidelines. So this happens, that's all part of the fun. So what we have, have to do is there's gonna be an awkward moment where we just literally enlarge and shift the whole horse. Do we do it all at once? Do we do it little bits at a time? So here's the nose coming in there. Here's a bit coming down there. This bit coming through here. Coming on top here, down here. Perfect. And coming up here. Cheek. Back here. And there's a hand. But we're not recognizing hands, we're just putting paint down where we see it. Here we go, there's another hand here. That again. Just putting paint where we see it. How's your garden blooming? It's doing all right. It's a low maintenance garden, so it makes life easy. <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. Um, what is your best painting that you like so far? Zoe, honestly, 
the one I like the most is on um, on on on. I think it's on TikTok. Definitely on Instagram. Um, it's of Clint Eastwood, and the reason I love that one the most is, um, it was just super fun to paint. I really felt like what I went to capture in Clint's face was there, so that was great. Um, and yeah, I just love the. I, it was one of those paintings, Zoe. I loved it so much. I love painting it so much that I actually. Um, Pulled it back out after I said it was finished and did another coat on it just because I wanted to keep painting it because it was just it was just a cool one I shouldn't have done it I wanted to it came out a bit better but I should have actually grabbed a new canvas done a new Clint Eastwood and gone from there for painting level three this year main go for gold I did a pirates theme for NZ's NCEA main that's cool that's cool. Um, you might start to see, yeah, the horse is going to look weird for a little bit too. And like, again, the whole painting is going to take layers and layers and layers to build up. But you'll start to see the head of the horse growing a wee bit now. And you'll see the body will look too small to start with. But eventually this body's going to come up bigger. And it's all going to, it's all going to come out perfect. Well, it might not. Sometimes it doesn't, but we're hoping that it does. Hello from Dunedin. Um, and we're in the Bay of Plenty right now, so that's fine. Okay, that's interesting. That needs to come almost. See another one here, guys. That's coming all the way out to there. There we go. Now we're in the right place. Um, and I sort of like the charm of things that actually. Yeah, when you look at a painting and you can see one line going down here and the artist has just changed their mind and just moved over a bit and continued here because it's like hey <laughs> it looked right at the time but this is where it's supposed to be and i'm going to be committing to this and they leave the mistake there that's sort of wholesome i like that hello from california ray and out of topic you mind <laughs> oh thanks zoe i have um yeah Definitely, all those things. Um, and down in Christchurch. Welcome from Christchurch. When did you start painting? Um, I started painting oh, oh, when I was like two years old. My mother, my mother thought that she had a little boy who was showing some talent. And so she pushed me into a lot of the art classes that I went on to do. Um, at the time, I didn't appreciate it as much as I should have. And now, looking back on it, she definitely played an integral role in making what happened possible. <coughs> Bless me. Um, so love your mums, guys. They'll do what they'll do their best for you. Um, when did you start playing? Ah, yeah, there we go. That's good. Thanks, Zoe. Appreciate you. Another thing too, guys, is don't be too hard on yourself with where you put the uh, initial brush strokes. Do what feels right. Oh, I just clicked my back there a little bit. Um, do what feels right and have some fun because 
um, if you strangle yourself and try and make yourself do what you think should happen, you're just going to end up making the whole process not enjoyable for yourself, which is going to make more strokes go in the wrong place. It's like overthinking a sport. You've got to relax. If something's going the wrong place, let it happen, and then it'll come into the right place as more layers come down. Um, yeah. That's what I reckon. That's what I reckon. What you said to me, I think I lost my Won't you help me find it? Same story here, guys. The temptation is to just keep hitting those uh, characters, the horse and the girl. Tension has to go in the background. The last thing you ever want to do is finish a painting and then all of a sudden be thinking, right. Hmm. Like, so finish the characters in the painting and be like, now it's time to do the background, but I really don't feel like it. Um, and that's why you get a lot of artwork, which is, it's fine. People, you know, if, if you like to do it, that's fantastic. Where you get like a character or like the subject in the middle and the background's just like matte, matte black or just matted out. So you're like, I want... I realise I'm painting a character, I just don't want to acknowledge there's a background. Um, I take more of a compositional approach where I think, right, the background's part of it, let's give it as much attention as the artwork, and if you don't want to do that, I zoom right in close to someone's face until literally, it's not even a portrait where you've got a background, you're literally losing the top of the head, the bottom of the chin and things, to just get face, so you can give it the importance to everything. Favourite food and drink, Zoe. Great questions. Um, let me think here. I reckon. Favorite food and drink. If there's any people from Chile here, I love a Michelada. G'day from Virginia. Welcome here. Um, <laughs> thanks, Alexander. Um, it is. It is my job. Um, well, is it a job? Um, no. No one's hired me. Like. I don't have an employer, so I guess, I guess it's a hobby I get paid for. That's a better way to put it. Um, I'm about to tune into this one because the vibes just read relaxing. <laughs> yeah, welcome. That's good. That's good. That's what we're doing here. Um, sorry, favorite food and drink. Okay, so if there's anyone from Chile here, it's unlikely, but if there is... My favorite foot drink is a michelada. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Michelada. Michelada. I think that's right. And I didn't like them to start with. I was very resentful when someone tried to give me a michelada the first time. And then I came around to it. Now I love them. Don't have them all the time. But when I get one, I'm so excited. Um, and food-wise, ooh. So my favorite food would definitely be a big rare steak. Just a big steak. But it, and that problem is though guys, that used to be my, my that used to be my favorite. I'm currently trying to cut down on meat intake for no other reason than I know mo, I'm, it's only for moral reasons. So I'm trying to cut down on meat. Um, I haven't done it yet that it successfully, but that would be my number one favorite. And I had to pick something else. Probably nachos. No, I can do better than that. Pasta? No, what would it be? What would it be? I don't know. I'm not sure. I like a lot of different kind of foods. Oh, a good burger's good. Um, we're moving to full time. Sorry, I'm moving to full time uh, this year. But been part-time for the last two years so we're going from 30 hours up to about 45 yeah 
We'll see what we get to. Oh no. Pop, I'm so sorry. Taco Bell's not that nasty. Um, I haven't really had it. I like the concept of it, but uh, yeah. I had, a, I had one bad experience with it. I got on Uber, which wasn't the best. Like it was Uber, it was late at night. And so it wasn't their best showing, but it wasn't really a fair way to test them, to be honest. Like they had all the odds against them. So I do need to go into a good Taco Bell, order their favorites and actually give them a proper chance. Cause that's, that's fair guys. You gotta give, gotta give the place a chance. Oh, that's, thank you, Zoe. You are a hundred percent right. I'd just forgotten all about it. Um, I love Lao and Thai food. Um, I'd definitely go for, I mean, I would say pork lap, but I'd say chicken lap. So pork lap but with chicken mince instead. Um, I love all the, all the uh, soups, the curries. I love spring rolls, all that style of food, but not, not the stuff that we get at like places in New Zealand trying to be Lao or Thai a little bit, but appease New Zealanders go to Laos or Thailand and have the real authentic flavors or have someone from there here make it for you in the way that they like it. Now you're talking. That's good food. Um, I shouldn't lump Laos and Thailand in the same basket either. They're similar, but they're not the same. It's like Australians and Kiwis. So if I was to pick one, we're talking Laos. That's, um, that's the smaller, less known one that's right beside Thailand. I, <laughs> yeah. But if you try the ones in that Lao make, they, oh, there's just something special and different about them. They, we tend to get spring rolls over here, sometimes a little bit processed, but they have a dipping sauce with them. They, it's oh, just, it's good. It's good. <laughs> thanks, Glutabelle, appreciate you. Oh, thanks, White Flower. Yeah, it depends. Some people will like the New Zealand accent, and some people hate it. Um, if you've seen Flight of the Concords, they crack a lot of jokes in that about how um, the New Zealand accent sounds like a robot. I have to kind of agree. Like when you hear Spanish people speak and change their tone and use expression, and then you hear Kiwis speak, you're like, we are sort of like a robot, a little bit monotone, but um, ah, we're stuck with it. So I love it for what it is. Um, I try to dodge the noodles, Zoe. Um, yeah, I try to get, I try to avoid noodles and um, the sort of more processed things if I can help it. But definitely like a good soup. But I'm one of those weird people who like gets the soup, eats all the meat out of it, like all the chicken bits and all the little veggie bits, and then has all the water and then leaves the noodles at the bottom. So, but I still enjoy it. I'm following New Zealand is so close to SA. I'm not sure what SA is, South America? San Antonio. Uh, this is New Zealand. Which artists are you most drawn to? That's a great question, right? That's a powerful question. Um, well, gonna get a bit boring with you guys because There's two artists I like the most. And I'm gonna sound real basic. Because you know, I've seen a lot of artists, studied art history, I've seen hundreds and hundreds and looked at this stuff intensely. I like Picasso and I like Van Gogh. I think those two are the best. And Picasso for a variety of reasons, but I love Van Gogh because we all get hung up on his work like the Starry Starry Night, but actually if you look at his stuff and you see um, the stuff that doesn't normally show up in, in pictures and t-shirts, if you go into a Van Gogh book and you flick through it and you see his more made on the fly works, it's weird how you can see it and it's messy. And if it wasn't, I, I don't know, you feel just a little bit a little bit of fulfillment, a little bit of happiness from it. It's um, it's weird. And you look at it and think there's not actually a whole lot of technical talent here in this piece, although we did have technical talent. You just look at it and think, I can sort of connect with this guy who made this piece and I sort of feel a little bit better having seen it. Um, yeah, he's got, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, there's a little thing I heard 
told me one time about a thing called mirror neurons. And mirror neurons, and this could be all hogwash, but I like it. Uh, it fits what I'm talking about really well. Mirror neurons apparently are neurons that fire, both when the person creating something is making it, so whether creating it, the neurons that fire, and then when a viewer looks at it, the same neurons in their brain fire as the ones as the creator had. So while you're looking at it, you're able to see how it was created and see how, how it sort of came to be, and you're both actually having the same experience inside your brain. Um, I, think, I think they were called mirror neurons. Now, I could be butchering that, and if there's a psychologist here, I'm so sorry. But the, uh, the idea that when you create artwork, that you could have a experience in your mind while you're creating it, that someone can then have a similar or synonymous experience of um, at a later viewing, that's, that's hands down uh, one of the most special things you could do. Um, and so I believe if you look at all the artists on a playing field and say, well, who would do that the best? you'd be looking first and foremost at Van Gogh, and then you'd be looking at Picasso. Um, but Van Gogh, because he never got acknowledged, Picasso did, and because Picasso got acknowledged, his artwork did change a little bit. Van Gogh's were always that, like that, yeah. You could really look at them and feel what he was feeling. But, um, and it wasn't normally, like, I know Van Gogh was very, very, he's got a very tough story, but in a lot of his paintings, like Starry Starry Night, he wasn't having a giant euphoric moment where he painted that picture. He was just thinking, I mean, this is me just thinking what he was thinking, but there's a cute night. I'll capture it. I hope everyone can enjoy it. And yeah. Yeah. So he produced like 3,000 works over a 10 year period. I think it was it was something obscene, one every three days, or three every day, so I forget, but, um, but they all, all of them have the same feeling of, yeah, Van Gogh, sorry for going on a uh, tangent there, but that's what I think, that's what I think. Um, if you ever do get a chance though, guys, um, you want to pick up a Van Gogh book um, because that's pretty special to see the works that don't get shown all the time. I promise I'll stop going on about Van Gogh now. Um, and I'll save the rant about Picasso, the positive rant, for another time. Like how an image just forms from all those little marks. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing that I try and do more than anything is um, let the paint be paint up close so it's messy, it's, it's primal, it's all those things. And then when you come back, um, you're able to see a picture come out of it. But it always wants to feel like the picture and the primal element of paint are 50-50, either battling or coming to an agreement on the canvas. Um, I do keep some of the artwork, but um, I was saying yesterday that uh, in terms of art, you know you've cracked it, like you're doing it right, when you go to sell a piece or you commission a piece, and when you've finished it, you want to keep it. Um, when you have that longing for something that you've created, now it's ready to be sold. It's a sort of a cruel reality. Yeah. Um, thank you for exposing it in that way. Super interesting. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Oh, explaining. Yeah. Um, it's not for a client, but uh, it's it, it 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 is is for someone. So we're making them something special. Um. Honestly, if I'm being completely honest, um, it was the lady who's here that we're painting um, asked me to do it 
and yeah, I I like her. I like her story. So I would love. I was actually on board to do this one. This is quite special for me. Um, I don't have a Twitter. I'd love to have a Twitter, but I'm not sure I'm cool enough. I don't know how to use it. I've got Instagram. Um, it'd be nice to, yeah. Hold on guys. I'm going to get another little coffee. Um, oh, no, 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 not for a special someone like that. Sorry, Glitterbell. Um, special in terms of she's got a really special story and she seems like a great person and she sent me some really cool pictures of like this particular one here. I thought that's actually, <laughs> that'll go really well in paint. So that's what we're doing. That's where we're at. Oh, look at that. That's cute. Daria... Daria just became the number one viewer. Welcome. This is very strange. Let's grab. Um, sorry guys, we got a little bit of an oddball there, but I've just got rid of him. Sorry about that. Um, can you give me like, mm, 30 seconds? I'm just gonna refill my cup. I promise I'll come back. I'll come back. Sorry guys, I'm back. Oh, thanks for the roses, guy. I appreciate that. That's phenomenal. Ah, oh, Michelle. You're now the number one viewer. I'm not sure what that means, but <clears throat> I am excited for you. Can you hear birds? Uh, you should be able to hear birds. And you might have just heard a fluttering there. There was a tui just up there in the Bahutikawa tree that went over to the right. Um, there should be a bunch though. That was a wood pigeon, Kedidu. Not sure what that is. Yellow hammer? I forget. I'm not sure. Um, can you show the view while you're painting? Um, I, <laughs> I would, and actually that was the plan. But um, today, and I'm so sorry, um, it's actually drizzling out there and raining. So I thought I'd come under the shelter here. Um, which, yeah, it's all right, which is more managing. But um, usually I'd like to be down there as well because it's cool for you guys, but it's also phenomenal for me to be out there in the environment. Um, that is the fourth person today who's asked me if I've got a Twitter. Can someone, can someone be phenomenal and tell me what I'm supposed to do with Twitter and why it's different from uh, Instagram and Facebook and the rest of them. <laughs> hey, from Toronto. I love that place. I love that place. Um, because I'm all for a new platform, but I don't understand it. Um, and I want to. Like Twitter's text, right? So you, like, what would you want? You want my thoughts? Um, hey, from Wales, UK. I've never been to Wales. Never been to the United Kingdom. Shocker, absolute shocker. But anyway. One day I'll go, guys. One day.
Had lots of friends from Wales. <laughs> Cheers, Kiki. Appreciate that. You know, those shoes show us everything we need to know. Well, I wouldn't get too excited. These are um, hush puppies, but I was very lucky because I bought them at a uh, op shop for eight dollars, New Zealand. It's four dollars American. Um, that's not very nice, guys. Is that what Twitter's for? Naughty. So again, guys, this horse is gonna look quite funny for the start because actually we're we're pulling it more towards the center so we're in the process oh thanks Michelle um, I had my <laughs> when I started the uh, thing I grabbed um, I looked down through the emojis that you can get and I'm like the hat and mustache that one looks cool so now we got one that's phenomenal thank you um, I do sell the artwork but the I need to stop giving the same spiel because I need to just sort it out. But the website's down right now. I'm doing some repairs on it. Not repairs, I'm giving it a facelift and I've almost got it finished. I told someone yesterday, 72 hours. So give me another 48 and we'll get there. I swear, I swear. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Appreciate you. I think that's what you said to me. Help you fall in. <laughs> well, the comments have been a little bit mean, so I thought I'd just get it all sorted, guys. Sorry. I wanted to. That's not what the stream's about. This, we're supposed to be looking at artwork. Um, yeah, this is fun. I'm liking where that jaw's landing at the moment, but it's actually not correct. It wants to be more here. Let's get that in there, like that, like that. But this does come down here more, which is a pity because I really liked how that was looking. There we go. And then this, like that. Like that. And then this. Coolio, and then this one wants to go here. Cool. Coming together. Coming together. Why do you paint with a bowl? That's a great question. <clears throat> um, the bowl here is, uh, this is, plate and I like painting on porcelain acrylics and oils go way better on porcelain so what happens is it mixes nicer I've used wooden ones before and paper but trust me if you get some old plates from a op shop just get some old ones in there in the corner and paint on those and you might like it um, he was painting with a glass bottle yesterday yeah I was Lucy that was, um, and that was actually really fun. So usually, glass bottle was all good. Usually I'll use a plate. Um, the glass bottle went better yesterday 
because uh, the rain was falling off the sides of it, so it made life a bit easier. But um, usually a plate's the go. Access to paint wise, paint's really cool because you can hold it really easily, but um, you have to rotate it in your hands, and so once you get the hang of that, you're away. But with a bottle, it's easy to spin, so that's a winner. Is a bucket required? What would you use a bucket for? I'm not sure. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's fair. Um. Hi, Seb, and thanks for the balloons. I love balloons. Um. It is going well. It is going very well. What's funny though, guys, is it hasn't drizzled since I've moved under the shelter here. And so we could have been out in the nature the whole time, but it would have been Murphy's Law that if we went out there to paint, um, the rain would have come down. It would have been an absolute shocker. So there's that. But we have got um, acrylic paints. And so if it stops raining for long enough, we'll bring out the acrylics and go from there. Otherwise, We'll just keep going with the oils. There's a patch here that we've ignored the whole time. I'm going to get it now. There we go. Hello. Fantastic. Little patch that we've ignored since the start. How long did it take to canvas to dry yesterday? I've seen painted. Uh, it didn't dry, so we, I say we, I do wet on wet, which means you don't give the paint enough time to dry before you throw another coat on. I probably confused you yesterday because I said um, I was going to wait for it to dry, which obviously now looks like a lie. Um, but what I actually did was if I give it 24 hours, the paint goes just a little more tacky. And if the paint goes tacky, um, what that will do is it'll mean that <clears throat> you can put new wetter paint on top and it will flow nicely and sort of use the underlying layers without mixing too much. So wet on wet. Um, there's a term for it, but I have forgotten it, so I'm so sorry. Um, but you can say wet on wet or you can say wet. If you wait for it to dry completely, you call that wet on dry, obviously. Um, and But yeah, I'm a wet on wet painter. Day's going good, Stephen. Thank you very much for asking. Appreciate you. Do acrylic and oil lay down differently? They do, Ray. Um, they do. So one thing you want to do is a lot of people will say choose one and stick to it. Um, I like using them both at once. So I've got my acrylic tray here. No, sorry, my oil pit tray here. My acrylic tray down there. Haven't used the acrylic yet, but if the oil gets too thick, I'll swap to acrylic because then they won't mix as well. And so I can keep adding more paint without having to worry about it turning to porridge because the acrylics and the oils will be like a natural, they just won't want to, they just won't want to play ball with each other. So you can keep adding more and more paint if you want to keep going. So that's fun. The dill spec. I wish, I wish, um, yeah. I'm not a dad, but that is, I think it should be normalized, guys. I reckon that being a dad is one of the greatest things that you could do in the whole world. So, I wish. I see a lot of fellas out there today, and ladies, saying they don't want to have kids. That's fine, good for you. I'm sticking to my guns. <clears throat> kids sound like the coolest thing you could do in the entire world. So... Sorry if you don't like that, but that is what I reckon. That's where I'm at. 
give me one of those big people moving vans and a bunch of kids who want to go around some pool somewhere or some a cinema. I'll be the little camp counselor host who takes them around. What a thrill. If you don't like that, wake up. That's living. Love the style of painting. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. You should do a paint with wine and teach us ladies. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Um, I used to do some wine and paint nights, but um, I haven't done them for a long time. Oh, hold on. I just need this bit on the face here. This is down here, down here. And that drops into there. Yeah, so there we go, that's, now it's in the right place. Sorry guys, we actually need to pull that head over even further, but now, see this is what happens if you don't have a plan. You have to keep moving things, but I know it's happening, so I'm fine with it. There we go. There we go. So we're back in just a second. Fantastic. Yeah, so it's slowly coming across the page. Um, <laughs> thanks guys. Um, <clears throat> when we do do, I say we, when I used to do uh, a few little art classes, we still do them, just haven't done it in a while. Um, a lot of the time, there's a bunch of people who come to smash wine, which is fantastic. You are more than welcome. There's a bunch of, there's like two or three people who come along and they have a little bit, a bit of that natural affinity with a brush. And so they have, they have fun because they're sort of doing that to be they're good at. Sort of like when you go to a sports field and there's just, you know, two natural athletes that are there as well. Um, and then you've got a bunch of people who are not wanting to smash a lot of wine don't want to make something silly and laugh at themselves, but are a bit nervous about actually um, the idea of making art. And those are the ones that you've got to crack. So the goal is to get everyone in the room, if you've got 10 or 15 people, to relax, enjoy themselves. And then if you have success, painting should be like dancing. Um, but I mean, with rugby or soccer, there's a good way to play it and a bad way to play it, but with painting, there's not. It's like dancing. So if I can get 10, 15 people in the room to just relax and dance the way they feel, think of how cool that room would be. Um, like an old school house party in a, in a shed or a barn where you used to, everyone just used to dance and not care about what anyone else was doing. Um, that's what painting wants to feel like. So that's where I try and get a class to. And I usually find the best way to do that is when I paint a really nice picture um, or like try and make it look perfect, <laughs> it does not work. I've got to make sure, and this is probably exactly what a dance teacher would do too, that my painting is the silliest one in the room. <laughs> and as long as that's the case, um, as long as I'm the biggest fool in the room, that gives everyone else the freedom to do a painting however they feel. So that's what I reckon. Um, but yes, wine and paint is a very wholesome activity. Very wholesome. Um, if you're perceptive, so I'm just gonna, give me a moment just for this horse's face a little bit. Um, then I'll finish off that thought. One second. Ah, I see, that's actually, okay, over here. There we go, down here. Is that there? Not good there. There we go. Sorry guys, almost there. Cool. Ish. Did I miss something there? Yeah, I sort of did. That needs to go in there. Okay. Uh, 
So, um, if you're really perceptive, guys, you'll start to see the horse and the lady. Um, now, what we don't want to do while we're doing that is to focus too much on those two subjects. I keep going on about this. I can't say it enough. There's a really, really important feature, which is as important as the horse and the lady, which is the, this, this, this background isn't just trees. There's branches going horizontally, and there's also a forest floor across here, which is actually as bright, if not brighter than the lady and the horse. So we've got to make sure when we are building up layers that we acknowledge that otherwise we'll end up with a lady with five to seven beautiful layers on her just looking fantastic and then we'll have a forest floor which is the earthy textured part with just one or two layers and it's gonna look silly so well I mean, it's your painting, you can make it look however you like, but I'd like to get that balance. Um, coffee and paint, yes, and actually I spoiled myself a little bit because usually I have really, really strong coffee, like the eight Makona, so the, the intense dark, but we've gone for the caramel Makona, so that's part of the fun. So here we are. Um, Bro, the way you... <laughs> Cheers, Kiki. Appreciate it. Um, you'd make a good impressionist. Um, is that for art or is that a... Probably. Maybe. Um, I think... I think when you say impressionist, the one thing that used to get me when I was in doing art theory was whenever we had an artist, we immediately tried to shoehorn them in... A, it's the wrong term, uh, box them in to say they're this, 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 and this, inspired by this and this. And yes, you need that process to collate artists and to understand the world as a whole so it all makes sense. But the unfortunate thing that happens when you do that is there are some artists out there, uh, Picasso is a good example probably, that are trying to do their own thing and find what is my style and what style can I have that best serves humanity. Um, that sounds really big and gestural and deep, but if you think about that in less of a heroic way and think, what's the way that I can make art that'll give people who see it the most fulfillment, um, then I think everyone sort of pursues their own style. And the way, like this isn't for everyone, this is just my way of painting. Um, you'll have your own way. And I, I had a lady, Claudia, actually sharing some work of her mother with me yesterday and um, she was talking about um, her mother painting New York scenes. And in the New York scenes, very, very complex, completely, almost the complete opposite of my style. Every little part of it, right down deep, was full of detail, full of accuracy, and full of realism. And that's her mother pursuing her way where she can create, create art that will give the people who see it the most fulfillment. She's got a different way, I've got a different way. Everyone's got their own different way. Um, yeah, sort of like singing. Everyone's got a different voice. Yeah. Um, Australian, New Zealander. So super close, super close. We're pretty much, yeah. People get weird about that. Um, some Australians and Kiwis and the rest of the world thinks, because some, because there's, a, my, that, because there's a minority of people who get weird about it, the rest of the world thinks that we care. Um, I love Aussies. Um, I've. I want to team up with them on every single chance I get. I, I think the Aussies are great. I think Kiwis are great. I think we get along fairly well. And I want, uh, yeah, that's how I feel about it. Um, oh, mean, are you, are you painting right now, Lucy? That's special. Um, sorry, a Kiwi is a, so a Kiwi is a, there's two, nah, two things. So there was Kiwis, which are the flightless bird here in New Zealand. Um, it's a little, looks like a chicken, but it's not. You can't eat it. It's very special to us. Um, and there's also, in China, they had a, a fruit called a Chinese gooseberry, which we then took 
um, and called a kiwi fruit because it grew really that really well here. And that's called a kiwi fruit. We have a little kiwi bird, and so people call New Zealanders kiwis. Sorry, I tried to make it as back. I tried to say it as fast as possible, but I think I just went long winded with it. So got there in the end. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, Aussies um, kiwis sound more like robots, and Aussies get a little more nasally with it. So yeah, at least that's my take on it. Both the accents are great though, and as far as the wet, uh, rest of the world's concerned, we're the same. And I'm glad to be lumped into a category with the Aussies. What a great teammate. <laughs> um, who invented pavs? Look, if the Aussies, if there's ever an Aussie who's concerned about that, they can have it. I just want to be their friend. That's all I want. It's all good. Um, you're from the States. Welcome from the States. States are great. Um, are you enjoying your day? Brad. G'day, Brad. Welcome from the state, uh, United States of America. We got the name Kiwi from our shoe polish back during one of the... Yeah. Wait, did we? Is that a thing? <laughs> Thank you for that fact. That's a great fact. I want to look that fact up. I didn't realise that at all. Um, but I can see that being the case. So we had a shoe polish. Okay. I know that's where um, the Americano came from. Because the Americans were drinking black coffee, right? Um, I think I'm following. I'm, sorry, they pop up so fast I try and catch up, but... I also want to paint at the same time, but um, I don't want to, yeah, how we go? I'm really into photography, wish I could paint. I'm painting, that's cool, Jasmine, that's cool. Um, photography is actually super special. Um, and I'm glad it gets so much attention because there's a lot of times where um, someone will show me a picture or I'll see a picture and they'll say, G'day Luke NZ. Yeah, year 12 design. I remember that. Um, I was doing year 12. Year 12 design. Year 13, it was a circus. Year 12, what was my design board? I forget. Probably a snowboarding brand? No, that was year 15. Year 11. Year 12. What were we doing? I forget. Fun design class though. Shay Holsey-Ball, she was a teacher. He's moved on to do, he does uh, guttering on houses now, which is a real shame because he was phenomenal with kids. But um, anyway, got a family, great guy. Um, it's my birthday today. Happy birthday, Morgan, you're the best. Um, yeah, <laughs> I vaguely recall the snowboarding one. I had a snowboarding brand that I tried to invent called Origins in year. 11 like when I, I wasn't trying to get a brand off the ground we all had to do like a sporty brand for year 11 design you make a board and you add stuff on it and it's it's all pretty fun it's all good yeah boards were fun boards were fun um sorry uh photography though see an image or someone gives you an image for a commission and you look at it and you think actually this picture you've given me or I'm looking at is perfect as a photo and if I try and turn it into paint you'll actually get less um, and that's a really cool moment where you can see that photography isn't just um, yeah isn't just oh, what am I trying to say that's one of those really cool moments where you can see photography is actually its own specialization where it can make something that's better than any other version of it. And you can look at it and go, that, that's where art comes in there. Um, sometimes I look at photos and think, that would be better as a painting. And, but sometimes you look at them and think, the only way they were going to capture that essence in the way that they have was with a photo. And that's special. Um, can I see your palette? Of course you can. Of course you can. This is our palette. So we've currently attacked the blacks and blues. 
We've used a little bit of tans. We've got an absolute ton of white here. And then later on, once these run out, we're gonna attack these more saturated colors. See where it takes us. So that's part of the fun. How long did you study painting? <clears throat> um, fair while. We did a lot in high school. Um, and then we did a bunch in university. Uh, but what was funny is in university, the assignments we were doing was less actual painting and more trying to nail the assignment. Um, hmm, I think, I think I did the most painting with private tutors and that, was, that wasn't that was my doing, that was my mother saying, you are going with this lady and you are going in this class. And I, I remember I was a, I was a little, uh, I wasn't a, a little brat, but I did not appreciate it like I should have. Um, she put me in these classes and said, you're doing this. I'm like, mom, I don't want to learn how to draw. Um, you know, I'm good enough. And actually I wasn't, I was terrible. Um, but I was getting those hard skills at a young age. And so it was sort of like surfing where you actually if you do it when you're young, it always comes naturally. Um, so that was really lucky. And yeah, I'm glad my mother said, no, <laughs> you're doing this. So that's fun. Um, is you, no, it's not. I'm so sorry. I, yeah, I, I get, uh, I got distracted yarning. That happens. Thanks for calling me out. Um, so we're so far away from finished, um, so, so far. So you can still see all the, you can still see gesso underneath it because there's areas that we haven't even added color to yet. Um, but we'll get there, we'll get there. Um, we probably, not yet though, we're gonna keep going with the blues because there's so many areas that still need it. Um, I lost trail of thought now completely. But yes, I was ignoring the painting, I'm so sorry. Um, and self-portrait. No, I, I couldn't. I haven't. I couldn't. I just... Painting takes a weird amount of, like, how to say it? It's not energy. It's sort of like a weird amount of mental energy goes in creating a painting. Um, and I sort of only started acknowledging that when I was trying to paint non-stop um, eight hours a day and by about the fourth or fifth day of, of, of just a regular day of work with a painting you were just mentally tired and you couldn't land strokes in the right place and um, so you only get a finite amount of energy that you can put into art each day and the issue that comes in with that is I want to use that to create other people and see their faces and do that I just couldn't oh the idea of creating my own face using up eight hours that could go into something like this that just sounds like a drag that sounds terrible um one person i love to paint or people i love to paint are um blah, 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 uh seniors so old people because their faces have so many wrinkles and there's this feeling of time in that but with the right colors you can add beauty to that so seniors great babies i think babies photograph better than they do paint um so not the not the actual baby itself you can photograph a baby and get a better picture than you can paint a baby i reckon um so i reckon uh elderly people especially those with with, with you know um crow's feet but like and yeah, yeah there's some wrinkles which when you paint them they can be very endearing um I'm after three days and still not finished. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Jasmine. We started this one. This is actually a different one to the one we were doing out on the ridge. This is a. Uh, this is the second day on this one. But yes, I am taking my sweet time, and it will take more than three days. Shocker. Best thing about Target University: friends. I made some incredible friends. Um, I met some people who literally changed my life for the better. Um, I wasn't intending on making such amazing lifelong friends, but I did. And I am, I consider myself to this day, 
I'm the luckiest human on the face of the planet. I don't know how I got so lucky to meet so many incredible people in one place. It was ridiculous. It shouldn't happen. It was inconceivable. Um, uh, but have seen your... Fa oh, I see. Uh, painting gloves. I Look, I should have gloves. This is silly. I'm going to paint on my hands. Paint on my hands means paint on my pants. Paint on everything. That person who said painting gloves is 100% right. I should have gloves. Um, I have made a huge mistake by not having them. My bad. Latex gloves are cool. Um, tight fitting too, and you can swap them out. Um, sorry, I'm 33 and didn't learn to draw or paint as a kid. I'm doing paint by numbers, but it feels backwards. Where should I start? The fact that you've already started is your, like, it sounds uh, condescending, but it's not. The fact you've already started, you're 80% of the way there. That's such a hard barrier to get past. Um, if you haven't got a paintbrush and paint and something to paint on in your house, um, that's such a mental barrier to, to climb over to actually start that process. So the fact that you're already painted by numbers means that you're so much closer than you even realize. So before you even think that you need advice, give yourself a pat on the back. Um, and then from there, um, I would just keep doing exactly what you're doing. And then when you feel like you want to change things a little bit, or you want to put some paint over here, or maybe that doesn't need to be blue. Like maybe, maybe the craziest thing you do on a painting one day is that the blue sky that's telling you is blue, you do it green, slightly more green, maybe even yellow. And you just do that and then these little weird changes you're making, these expressive, um, emotional things that you've done to separate yourself from a number game to being a creative game, they'll proliferate, they'll manifest, and before you know it, you'll be like, you know what, I don't even want a picture today, I'm just gonna paint whatever I feel like. And that's when you've sort of cracked it. So, yeah. Um, it probably wasn't the advice you're expecting, but I reckon keep doing exactly what you're doing. Um, champions go to cheers, Jake. <laughs> um, Lucy, in your show, your painting. Yes, uh, Lucy, if you're painting right now, you don't have to if you're shy. I respect that, but I would really appreciate it if you flip me some pictures of your work because that's super cool and I would love to see it. Um, I do, Penny, I love portraits, so this is actually, this would be a genre piece, I think, that's what you call it, but um, uh, I typically love portraits the most. Um, zoomed in, I have it right up close, so the whole face, skin hits all four sides of the canvas, um, and portraits of seniors, that's where I really, that's where I thrive, that's bread and butter for me. Um, I'm sorry if I'm missing a few comments here, guys. Um, I am trying to catch them, I swear. But, like, it's a... It can be a tough gig. Um, so here. Let me just get this um, black part sorted. Because there's a lot of white in here, but it's supposed to be black. Here we go. Now we're talking. Same story here guys, the temptation, if you see a bunch of black in the background, is just to just send it in a big square, but don't add in the background gradually in respect that it deserves as many strokes as the characters in the foreground. And your painting will thank you later. Because after you've seen the subjects in the foreground, the next place your eyes go is to the background. And that sounds like a really basic thing. You're like, oh, of course. But if you, when you've got someone viewing your artwork, if they go from the subjects in the foreground to the background, and the background doesn't have enough intrigue to capture them and send them back into the foreground or keep them engaged in the painting, they'll move on to the next one. Um, it's like a song with a bad chorus. <laughs> the background would be the chorus of the song. So if the background's good, it'll keep pulling them back into the painting so they can enjoy it more. How do I explain that well? 
Otherwise it just sounded like waffling. Sorry. Um, which part of New Zealand are you in? I'm in Brisbane, Australia. Brisbane, nice place. Um, booming vegan market, as I understand it. I went there once and I was surprised at how many vegan restaurants and cafes there were. In a good way, it was cool. Um, because the problem we get here in New Zealand is places try and be have vegan dishes or vegan offerings, but they usually aren't that yummy. But Brisbane had yummy ve yummy food that happened to be vegan. There's a big difference. Um, yeah. Giving you some ideas? That's fantastic. I'm glad. Um, yeah. Hola. Welcome. Right. So we're making good ground here, guys. Um, are we going as fast as we should be going? No, I'm a bit of a talker. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not a vegan, Dylan. Um, uh, but I'm one of those people who, so my favorite foods, red meat. I love big steak. I would have for dinner a 400 gram scotch and be a happy boy, that's me done. But um, the thing is, I'm trying to move away from meat, or at least red meat, and try and reduce my meat intake. Um, but it's hard, I love it so much. Um, and, and I love farming, I love all those things. So it's like, yeah, rough in a hard place. But even right now though, I'll, what I do, what, I've, what I have done, is I've cut back on, I won't have any cheap meat now, so I'll just have the, the, the highest quality stuff I can get my hands on, whether it be beef or chicken or wherever, so I know that it's as ethically farmed as possible, and then if I can't get that, because it's more expensive obviously, and I can't afford that all the time, I can't get that, I go for uh, the, I just try and eat vegetarian food, so a lot of eggs, a lot of, uh, a lot of, eggs, a lot of cheese, a lot of milk, but um, yeah, as long as I can, when I do have meat, I can try and make sure it's a, it's a bit of quality product. I think that's a reasonable compromise at this stage for me. Um, Cause there's some farmers out there doing a fantastic job guys. Um, you didn't come here for a morality lesson, but there is some farmers out there doing a great job. Um, Chris Grimes, hey, welcome. Congrats on being number one. And thanks for the cake. Appreciate that. <laughs> hey Rosie, no I'm not. Um, I'm with the, I'm lucky enough to be with the most incredible person on the face of the planet. And if I'm extra lucky, that will never ever change. Um, that would be fantastic. I would be a happy boy. Go. Right. Um, now, by the end of this painting, guys, we're going to definitely, um, definitely, definitely, definitely um, add in a bunch more colours, but we're going to slowly build it up. And so, one thing we're focused on, because I know in the picture it's going to have a bunch of greens and oranges and tans is that uh, we want to focus on the pinks and the blues because they'll be harder to see once we really try to bring the picture into more detail. So um, if you can see it, the picture's actually in black and white. And the reason I do that to start with is so we focus more on the hues rather than getting caught up in uh, thinking, all right, that's red and that's green. Let's get those colors and try and make it happen. Pull it out of there. <laughs> Cheers guys, appreciate you. What she said to me. Okay. Now 
I'm really enjoying this horse shifting constantly. I think part of the part of the appeal of this horse, and we're going to capture some movement in this horse, is the fact that we've put it in the wrong place about three times now. So when it lands in the right place, there'll be lines all around it, pulling it to where it should be. Um, and that can look really cool. Why are you messing up that shirt better? You just wear it. <laughs> Cheers, bro. Um, do you add your signature when you're done? Um, I do sometimes, Penny. Um, sometimes people ask for it. If I get my choice, I like to sign the back of it um, and add a little message. Um, but some people want the signature on the front, um, which I can totally respect. Um, but I sort of feel like the style is, like once you get an eye for it, you can start saying, oh, that's a said painting. That one over there, that one's, yep, that's him. Um, and then you sort of just need the confirmation on the back. Um, yeah. And that way, that way there's not some awkward little corner down here. Like that sort of, I don't know, uh, yeah. I will sign it on the front, people want that, but I like it on the back. Um, or my main preference that I like, if I can, um, is to put the frame on it myself and then sign the frame. Um, so the art works sort of on its own. Yeah, sort of feels weird. I think we're past that now, guys. Are we, do we still need watermarks on art, like physical watermarks? Um, I mean, it's not like it goes on a ship somewhere for a few months and it needs confirmation from someone. Like, you can just go on the IG and like see it. Be like, yep, that's that's that one. It's golden. That's his one. And plus, my signatures are scribbled, so it could be anyone. <laughs> um, online mainly and commissions. Online and commissions is where I thrive. Um, I've tried to get a body of work. I'm trying to get a body of work together for a gallery. Um, but I've had some problems with it because um, it's been moving a little bit fast. Um, and I need to get I need to get some paintings to them and say, right, these aren't these aren't gonna be sold through the website or anywhere else, these are going straight to them. They have them. So woman with horse. Yes, you got it. But it's fine, I'm back. Oh man, I got... What? Lucy, you have been nothing but sweet and you are more than welcome here anytime. I've got no idea why that would happen. Um, yeah. This live stream is lucky to have you. And if you missed it before, I was saying that if you're feeling confident enough, you should send some of your artwork to me. Um, not the physical stuff, just send me some pictures because I'd love to see what you're creating. Um, Larissa, I would love to sell your painting, but this one here, um, first dibs goes to the lady who's been depicted. Um, yeah, she gets to have this one, um, but we can make you one for yourself. And if you want a commission, then uh, private message me, tell me what you're after, and we can work something out. Um, the stuff ships from New Zealand. So that can be a long way for some of you, but not impossible. Lucy, I will not judge in the slightest. Um, the fact that you're willing to share it is phenomenal in itself, and I really appreciate that. Okay, so we're, we're currently doing around the horse's eye and head at the moment, but like I was saying, guys, we have to be very careful to not acknowledge in our own mind, psychologically, when we're doing this, that that is a horse's head and that we're painting here or an eye or anything like that. We just want to hit the colors and the hues that we see. That's so important because as we slowly build up the layers, um, we'll either get a lovely picture where paint strokes become a reality in themselves or we'll get this weird cartoon drawing where we're like, this is a horse's head. This is what it should look like. Don't want the second one. We want, yeah. 
When did you first realise you want to be an artist? What age? It's been a pipe dream since I was a baby. Since I was a baby. So, technically you could say, I'm living my dreams. And that would be true. Um, but, at the same time, um, I didn't realise it could be a reality until I was about 25-ish. That's when I started to realise I could actually do this. This could be a, this could be a thing. Um, yeah. So that's cool. I think there's a there's a difference between having a dream and realizing a dream. I think that'd be that's sort of mutually exclusive and not yeah. You could have one without the other, or one could follow the other. It's pretty cool when they come at the same time. Pollock's horse. How much do paintings cost? Um. They vary, Poppy, it depends. Um, it depends on time. Um, so, the more abstract works. Abstract sounds great. I'll just close this door, sorry guys. So, abstract's faster, but the one thing you run into with abstract work is you think, oh, since it's faster, it should be cheaper. You can't make a whole bunch of abstract work every day. If you're doing real abstract, it's very mentally draining. And so, um, although the price comes down, I try and do not too much of it because the speed you go at it with, the expression of the brush strokes and things to get it right. And a lot of the time you'll do abstract work where you'll look at it and be like, hmm, nah, that's not even the studio. It's not, it's not quite right. Because um, you need to know when an artist is throwing around paint, that when they hit the end result, they weren't like, ooh, I hope someone buys that. Um, they look at it and go, that's what we were after. Right there. So sorry, that's a, that's a tangent. Um, usually, so artwork takes anywhere between four and 15 hours. Um, this one here is on board, so it's actual buy-in cost is quite cheap. When I use a canvas, and I have to stretch the canvas myself and build the canvas and things, that, that puts the cost up more. And then shipping, you. The, I put it in polystyrene boxes, which is um, with a cardboard outside, so it's a whole protective box for it. So it goes in that, and um, that's that's another cost there too. So the box is about 300 New Zealand, um, and then if it's a canvas, it's about 200 to 300 dollars that I'm going to pay for that. But if it's a board like this, this board's only 30 dollars, so it's cheap. Um, but this board's still standard practice, they're phenomenal things, but a board needs to be framed. Because <laughs> you can't just hang a board. Um, you could, but... Um, so, but a canvas doesn't need framing. So you have all these costs that come into it. So usually your materials are around the... I mean, if you your materials to get a, part, a piece of artwork finished for shipping are around the $600 to $1,000 mark for in New Zealand dollars. And then you got the shipping, the actual delivery of it and then my hours on it, which, yeah. So it depends on the work, but it chops and changes. Um, yeah. Abstract can also be frustrating, it can be. It can be the most frustrating of the lot, but um, sometimes, sometimes it can be the most fulfilling, because there's been a few times where I've actually thrown around some paint, and then within 30 minutes, I've been like, stop, stop, call it off, blow the whistle, that one's done. That's perfect, just the way it is. There's not a stroke of paint that you could put on that to make it capture what we set out to do. You need to put that canvas away, you need to pick up a new canvas and start again. So, sometimes you hit that straight away. Um, did you have a career path? But yeah, no, I've had, I've had a career path. Um, I've worked for a franchise, so a restaurant franchise, doing all sorts of stuff, ops managing and um, things like that, which is really fun. Um, I've worked for Keep America. Um, so that's when you go overseas and work in a summer camp for a couple of months, um, looking after children, running programs like water skis, lifeguarding waterfront and things like that. Um, that was really fun. If anyone's thinking about doing something for a gap year or they've got, a, or if they're in their mid or early 20s and they're thinking, what am I gonna do at the moment or what's What's something I could do to give me an idea? Um, Camp America. Um, I think the company I did it through, I know the company I did it through, it's through IWH, which is International Working Holidays. And Camp America is, oh my God. 
I couldn't I couldn't travel on my own to be honest. My first time over in the States was with Camp America and I got the visa, it was easy, I got over there, everything was organized, I did a month of travel at the end. Best way to get an orientation to the States and then my camp loved me so I kept going back over and over again. Um, and honestly, there was not a better experience I could have had in the whole world, so, for me. So if you're thinking about what to do or you want to travel overseas, I think you just Google IWH, I think it'll give it to you. But um, Camp America, so it's a program that IWH run. And you you can thank me later, it's the best. That was my other job, so yeah. Um. <laughs> That's all good, Sonny. Um, Hey, like I was saying earlier on, um, give paintings time, because the early layers are, uh, are always, they shouldn't look pretty straight away. That'd be like grabbing someone who's, that'd be like grabbing a house when you're looking at the foundations and you go, hmm, a lot of concrete, a lot of four by two wood, it's just not the same vibe I thought it would be. And you'd be like, oh, just hold on. We haven't painted the walls yet or put the floor in or even built the house. Um, yeah. So that's similar with painting. Let, let the painting come together. There's another three or four layers, if not more, to go into this one yet. And in that time, it'll completely change. So. In the same way a person's allowed to grow and change, so is a painting. So we'll let that happen. Yes, please. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Brazil lover. Yeah, it sounds good. Very positive stories I've heard regarding Camp America. Oh no, Brett, that's terrible. Um, no, I've like honestly, I've I got it recommended to me. I had a hunt. I like went over there. I had the best time of my life. Um, and everyone I know who's been a part of it has had a phenomenal time. So I can only say nice things. Love the background of the horse. Warmer, yeah. So it'll get much much warmer. The finishing colours on this are gonna be reds and oranges and these warmer fiery colors i want fire in this painting at the moment it's cold and whimsical it almost feels like a frozen soundtrack um but towards the end so we're leaving no color out of this it's going to be all the colors of the palette um those reds and oranges are going to be on top so fire and energy and just vibrancy is going to be front and center in this painting um yeah. So if you're getting like a, a whimsical sort of feel to it at the moment, trust me, I like that vibe, but we're going, we're going for heat later in this picture. Definitely. Um, yeah. Thanks, Anne. Appreciate you. But if you were here at the start, or sorry, <clears throat> if you're here at the start, I'm sorry because I'm going to repeat myself, but if you weren't, um, I'm just going to say it again. That if you're going to paint in a public place where people can see you, be aware that only until the very end of the painting are people going to actually like it. Um, and when you're starting it, most of the time, some people paint beautifully area by area. You might be one of those people who actually has um, a style that is messy to start with and then reality and a fantastic picture slowly pull their way out of and if that's the case there's a lot of that pulling phase where actually the artwork's not going to look nice to a viewer who's just walking past um, so prepare for that and be ready for that and just trust that you know what you're doing that sometimes your process makes fantastic pieces of artwork and other times it bombs that's what I do. Sometimes it fails. So you've just got to trust your own process. It sounds so cheesy. It gets said so often, um, but it's true. It's true. Um, so sorry to yammer on that same horse again, but uh, yeah. It's a truth bomb. And then also be prepared, one last thing, that after you finish it and you love it, the other people might not. Because why should everyone like what you like? 
So if you do finish a piece of artwork and you're happy with it, be prepared for some people to, and if you act, sorry, happy with it, it's different. If you love a piece of artwork, actually properly love it, realize that you're probably at an extreme, which will mean other people will hate it. Um, and that's okay. What's cool is if you actually genuinely love something and other people have an opinion on it, it's quite wholesome. Let them have an opinion. Let them have a crack. Um, I think... Hmm. We're going to stop there with the blacks. I like the blacks. We will come back to them, but we'll pause there for now. <laughs> Thanks Dylan, welcome to the stream. I'm looking for some art supplies for Christmas. What's most important to splurge on? That's actually a really good question. Paint, paint. Um, you can spend a lot of money on brushes. Don't bother, you can use a stick for a brush, doesn't matter. Um, but actually, I was the other day, the live stream I did a few days ago, I went downtown, I got to the beach, I pulled everything out, my partner was going for a surf. Coolest trick on the face of the planet. She was going surfing. I was being me, painting at the beach. And got down there, I set up my easel, and didn't have a paintbrush. Didn't have a paintbrush. So I had to get flax from the bushes and make myself a little makeshift brush. So brushes are irrelevant. Don't even worry about it. But with paint, you can really, really tell um, cheap paint from good paint not just when you look at a picture, but actually when you're using it. Saturated paint is the key. So if you want to make, if you want to splurge on something and, I'm, and like forget the canvases, people are like, get a good quality canvas. No, go to the DIY store, your Home Depot or your Bunnings and go buy a board, like an MDF board, golden. In fact, people in the olden days didn't have canvases, they didn't use them. They used like a hard board. So if you go to uh, your Home Depot, Mitre 10 or Bunnings, and ask them for masonite. They might be confused because it's so old school, but it's called hardboard. It's like MDF board, but it's, it's darker. That stuff will cost you like 20 bucks a sheet. So your canvas costs just plummeted. Your paintbrush, like I say, anything will go. Use a cloth if you have to. And paint though, get good quality paint, splurge on that, and be liberal with it. Don't get like a little bit of like paint. Like look at this, this is oil paint. This is, this is a lot because this is where the hammer meets the anvil. Fill the tank up with gas, um, yeah, and you'll be away. Or, you know, that's just my advice. Someone might have better advice or different advice, good for them, that's what I say. Um, so I hope that helped. Uh, where in New Zealand is this? This is Bay of Plenty. So, you can't see it, because it was drizzling, so I moved under the shelter, but out in that direction is the mount. Um, you can sort of see it through the pine trees. Sorry, let's get my back. Oh, there we go. Um, you can sort of Thanks, mate. Appreciate you. You're welcome. Um, a little coffee for me. It's pretty special. Um, so, yeah, Bay of Plenty. Uh, the picture is on top of the paint. Yeah, it is. It is. So, we're getting there. Black and white, because we want to not be thinking about colour, we want hues only. Um, do you do commissions? I do, Dirk. Um, so what you want to do is flip me a message on TikTok or on Instagram. It's in the bio there. And tell me what you're after, um, where you live and a vague idea of size. And what we can do is, um, yeah, I can flip you a rough estimate on cost and you could either say, go jump in the lake, or, oh my god, you're so cheap, how soon can you do it? So, that can be what we do. Uh, I started painting on cheap wood from Mitre 10, yes! Started buying test pots. That's actually great to do that. Um, people get hung up on thinking you need to get the artist paint from, you know, warehouse stationery, and you go there and buy the Atelier paint, and things like that. You don't need it. If you're, if you're just having some fun splashing around some paint, Go to, yeah, get the, get the house paint, get the uh, Dulux little test pots from, uh, from Mitre 10 or Dulux or Resine and have some fun. Still paint. Um, house paint will, 
they're like, yeah, it's not going to last um, centuries. Who said it needed to? Just have some fun with the paint. It's all good. Um, works wonders for my style. Fantastic, Kim. Do your thing. It's phenomenal. Um, love that. Go crazy with the paint. Hello, artist. Yeah. Okay, guys. Good night from Spain. Welcome from Spain. I was actually in Spain pretty recently, and I had the best time. Thanks for having me. San Sebastian is phenomenal. I would go back to San Sebastian in a heartbeat. Favorite place I went all over Europe. So, very, very happy with that. Very happy. some thicker paint in here now guys just to have some fun cool thing about oil paints is you can add it on quite thick because when we come back to it tomorrow it'll be uh, it'll be BBB still wet so the texture won't get in our way but with acrylics thick paint will leave grooves and lumps and things that'll be quite hard to work around in the uh, future layers so if you like adding texture but don't like working around texture you might like oil paint just an idea again I, I'll say it I'll say it again guys you can ignore everything I say if you want I'm just a random stranger with some random creative ideas on how to paint. Um, for you personally, it's highly likely someone else's advice would be better for you. But this is mine. Take it with a grain of salt and I hope you like it. Um, oil paint is so much fun to paint with. It is, it is. But if you're using oil paints, do yourself a favor. Um, paint outside or in a very well ventilated space. <laughs> hey, nice to meet you too. And the reason I say that is people can get, um, in tight spaces, they are quite gassy. And you can, um, yeah, you, your brain's a very important thing. You're a very important thing. You're so much more valuable than any work of art um, if you can ventilate the space or paint the outside. So when we paint inside at night, we I keep myself just to acrylics. And when we're painting outside, I try and use oils as much as possible. So I've got acrylic paint over there but since it's a nice day out and since it's bright and things I'm just sticking to the oils for now but if this stuff was in a tighter space because of how much we're using um, yeah protect your frontal lobe you're worth it um, <laughs> hey thanks Bella appreciate you I'll take it the Canadian flags means you're from Canada which is super cool I love that place I stayed in uh, British Columbia for a while and it was an absolute dream um, huge fan and when I start painting like a long time ago I was saying earlier I started when I was about two years old my mother my mother thought that I was a little creative fella so she pushed me into all sorts of creative pursuits which helped me become the artist I am today so thanks to mum she made it all happen Not so weird as yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday was an absolute shocker, guys. Thanks to everyone who joined, but <laughs> I was just I was just standing out while it was hammering down with rain. I'm like, you know what? I set up, so I'm determined to be here. I'm gonna stay here. And yeah, it wasn't the it wasn't the best move. <laughs> That was my, uh, what's the word, uh, perverse is the word. That's when you're, that's when you're just like pig-headedly staying in your lane. And that's what I was doing. I was into it. Is that an angel? Um, she does look very angelic in this picture. So um, it's a lady with her horse. Um, and she's in a fantastic dress. And yeah, 
it's an absolutely radiant picture so i'm very lucky that she's asked me to paint it um because yeah the whole composition is really cool and she's going to really come into her own because when we come back later on we're going to add in those like i was saying the, the reds and the oranges which is going to make her just seem fiery and alive like a, yeah angelic is what we're going for um and you <laughs> yeah yeah this is, i'm on to my second coffee and i didn't knock over the first one either so that's a winner she has a snout no, the horse has a snout. She's fantastic. She she looks absolutely lovely. Um, so it's gonna look great. Um, yeah. Yep. Yep. But I think I think I need to check. I think she's a I think she's a show jumper. So you say princess, but she's more cowgirl. Um, than anything else. I'm just guessing though, I don't know enough to be fair. But we'll just keep hammering paint on. Sorry guys, just adding some paint in there. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. There's only one piece of art in this life and you know, <laughs> and he's got, hey mate, great vibes coming across. Thank you very much guys. Appreciate you all. Um, I haven't got that much longer though. I wanted to use this whole paint tray up, but I do have to rush off to do some work, so. Not painting work, other work, other work. Um, but I will get down some of these whites. There we go. Yeah, I think that that is almost. Hmm. If I had another two hours. I'd be really, really tempted to add in some more. I'd get the dark greens out and start going through the background, but I don't think I've got time to really do it justice. So let's see. And this is a classic one, guys. Since we're using a black and white picture, we're welcome to come in here and add the green in to a body. Because it's the right hue, so it's all fine. When it's done, will it look like the picture, color-wise? No, no it won't. So we're definitely going to do it with a bunch of different hues. So you're gonna see um, it, a little bit, a little bit, but we do want to make sure, I do want to make sure that actually we put this huge amount of focus on getting all the tones right and the detail right, but actually all the colors want to be whatever we saw fit to put in when we add the colors. So that's what we want. Um, a good example of it is if you look on 
my Instagram at a video of doing Beethoven. So, is it a Brazilian flag? Welcome. Uh, I can't quite read the name, but welcome. Um, so, the Beethoven face was just really pale, but it'd feel weird to do a master of music in quite a pale color. It just wouldn't fit right. So, got a black and white picture of his face, um, and I added in all the hues on wild colors, and it actually captured more of the um, creativity and style that I believe Beethoven probably had. Um, creativity in his own mind. Alright. But I need to dash. So, um, you decide you've had enough. Well, on any particular day, um, it's more of a time constraint thing, uh, but in terms of something like uh, when the painting's actually finished, a uh, million different one, million and one different ways to tell. But I like it when you look at a painting and really, and when you really want to keep it. That's when you know you've nailed it. That's when you know you've hit the right place because if you want to keep it and you you feel a connection with it, then you're probably at that stage where you put enough paint on it. Um, even if there's raw canvas, leave it. If you love it, you love it. So it's golden. Um, all right, guys. Uh, we've got to do another. Eh. We've got to do another. I reckon two or three coats. Two or three coats should do it. But um, we'll leave that for now. I've got to dash off, and I will catch you all probably either tonight if I have the energy or I'll catch you um, yeah. cheers guys um, or I'll catch you mm, tomorrow same time we'll see um, or earlier it just depends on this weather guys this is wild it just comes through with wild showers but we'll see all right guys thank you very much and uh, I will see you later if I can figure out how to pause the stream I think I can. Here we go. See you guys.